broken. Their people are stupid. The corporations have created laws that are unsustainable by their own maxims, if challenged. And when it comes to banking, the system is no sicker than in finance. Now, in terms of the writing and planning for Eucadia, and I've mentioned this before, when we speak of the products that will be rolled out for Eucadia and, and solutions, they will be done at a local community, will be at a local community. But when we roll those out, we're not simply mimicking the products and systems of the survey camera of the Rothschilds and their fraternity. We are looking at what products are necessary. What were the products that were used in society when society was sustainable a thousand years ago? So instead of loans, we speak of promises because promises are at heart the element here. We're looking at a sustainable system of good faith, not simply a system of how people can make money. We don't talk of insurance because insurance is a system that is totally broken and is about making money and thievery and not paying. The concept behind it is a concept of contingency. That is, to put something away in case things go wrong. There's nothing evil about that. There's nothing illogical about that. In fact, it is something that all societies need to do. So that's contingency. That's what we mean by insurance. Now, whenever one does investments, yes, securities are an important part of that. Groups and trusts need to raise money, and so securities themselves, but not derivatives, not securities of securities, where the, the thing of value is extracted from something that has already been extracted. This is the absurdity of the system where they is feeding on itself and creating debt from debt. And we have transfers when we speak of things like deposits and withdrawals, which we know a deposit is really a grant. And even the word grant is not ideal. So when we speak of the uh, effective um, transferring of goods and withdrawing of those goods, we speak of transfers, of concessions and exactions. Now, I, like you, am as frustrated as the next man or woman in terms of funding. I am absolutely at financial rock bottom. And for all the help and success in previous times, I have not been able to get the money owed to me paid and I am in as terrible straits as I've ever been financially. But I will not compromise the importance of completing these rules because without these rules, there is no way that we can uh, enable our communities to function effectively. It's not simply the giving out of credit that is going to transform. In fact, Credit alone will not transform a single thing on the ground. What will transform is how that credit is given and how that credit is used. And it's the knowledge that is in bold, in, embedded in those products that will change. And we're very, very close to that. Well, I hope the movements that are planned on banks uh, follow through. I hope that we will see uh, finally some people waking up and, and, and willing to continue to come on and help us as they can. And I look forward to sharing with you the unfolding work of the canon, certainly as we head towards October the 31st in terms of Martin Luther and anniversary of uh, challenging the system. But it remains a painstaking plotting process and as much as I would like not to have to do it, uh, it's with your feedback and with your insight that we do complete this. The law is the foundation. Without the law, there is chaos. The law and the restoring of the law gives us the vision and the opportunity that we will have the tools for any community, for all our communities to sustain. So while those move and challenge, which is great, 
we remain steadfast that without the foundation, this is just another change of the guard of the Roman system. But with UK and with the foundation, I hope to see permanent, lasting change. I can't do it without you. I hope this is helping you. Thank you for all the help that you give and the word that you spread. Thanks very much, and I look forward to answering questions. Thank you. Okay, there's a few questions here. Um, so let's get in and see if we can answer some of those questions. I'd love to hear from you if you want to press uh, star 8 or hash 8 or you want to uh, call, just make that call uh, on and uh, we'll unmute you and love to speak with you. Okay, so I'm just going through and looking at the first questions here and let's see what we have. Uh, what's the first question here? Da -da -da -da. Question, question. Okay, guest 15 says, uh, what if you only have one witness for the certificates of survey and title and vacant possession occupancy? The Well, you have a problem because when we speak of witness and we speak of ritual, we're, we are trying to adhere to the ancient principles of their ritual and it, it is one of the principles in their system that two witnesses are necessary for validity uh, to witness and testify to an event. If you actually look back in the Roman times, uh, the Roman times in some transactions, they actually required up to seven witnesses. If you go to ancient Greek times, uh, there is some evidence that they went over the top. And in, in some cases, you needed an entire agora, an entire group uh, of jury to bear witness to what you're doing. So here, when we speak of two, that is a requirement that I'm sorry we can't avoid. Uh, got another question here from Klaus in Iowa. Can one go back to the county recorder and obtain an acknowledgement effective ab initio to time of purchase? I don't think so. No. I'd like that to be the case. I know they've got their time machines, but no. The answer is I don't believe uh, you can do that, Klaus. I'm sorry. Uh, the question here uh, from Guest 15, suggestions on rejecting a summons of dispossessory. What I would say to you, Guest 15, is I asked those on the call to go to One Heaven. I hope you did go to the site one-in-heaven.org and that you did, in fact, go to the Canons of Positive Law. If you went there, you'll see that there is actually a, a, a dedicated section there describing summons and it is article 306 that's article 306 of positive law concerning summons I suggest you have a read of that and then follow up with the next question because that gives you some answers about summons uh, let's see if we've got a call we've got a caller here uh, alpha 999 I'll continue with the questions in the chat in a moment but let's see if we can speak to alpha 999 uh, Alpha 999, Hi. can you hear us? Yes, go ahead. I'm ready to go here. Hi. Um, I was going to ask you a question, Frank, about uh, the agreement you were talking about. Um, and what about, uh, like, uh, if you've done a notice of understanding to somebody, you present, you presented them something, and then you've given them time to respond, and then by their acquiescence, they didn't respond. How does that play into... Um, have an agreement. I was under the understanding that uh, if someone doesn't respond in the allotted time, that you'd have an agreement with somebody. How do you respond to that? Yeah, I've been going through some of this work in terms of uh, negative averment, uh, honour, dishonour. There, there is, there is obviously a provenance to this kind of material. For example, the origin of putting stamps on documents for conveyance comes from a act of UK Parliament, the Bill of Sale Act of 1878, I think it is, that, that act. So there is also a provenance in terms of the uh, use of honour and dishonour. And the honour and dishonour process ultimately comes from the Bills of Exchange Acts and the commercial agreements of the corporation 
uh, from the 19th century. Unfortunately, it gets mixed up in what we're doing because everything in their system is commercial and so we're using these commercial procedures to place them in dishonor, but not sometimes getting, I think, on top of what we're, we're doing. Um, if the notes of understanding, the negative averment, I would say, um, can be used, and I have used it, uh, to, to enable an agreement to, to be formed. Uh, providing those elements are there, um, certainly in their system, there is uh, adequate statutes to say that the use of negative averment will form a, a, a form of agreement and understanding. I'm not completely convinced of all the elements yet. And I, and I do suspect that we're kind of having a bit each way when we've spoken about these things in the past. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Well, in, in, a, in the case, uh, what I did is I have this issue with my ex-wife and I couldn't get agree with, agreement with her. And so what I did is I prepared a notice of understanding and then a claim of right to specific understandings that I had and agreements that we had and then a claim of right. And, of course, I gave her an extension of time period and then a notice of uh, dishonor. Yep. Um, after the, I went through a process, gave lots of time to respond. And it's my understanding, and I did the stamp thing too, which, you know, is probably going in a little to their system further. But um, I, I just, I thought that that could be used and I could use that agreement uh, using the word agreement here that's I looked at it as a, as an agreement a tacit acquiescence agreement well yeah uh, what I'd say is you you have uh, you have an agreement with the system not with her but you have an agreement with the system that a debt uh, that you are owed a valid debt because of dishonor but it's commercial right it's a commercial Agreement and the system is granting you that agreement, not her. Well, they're not. Back they, to, don't, they don't. They don't recognize it well yet. I mean, I'd have to take it into the courtroom to be recognized as a valid. Correct. Agreement. Correct. But this is but, where I think yeah. we 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 have run into a bit of a buzzsaw in 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 mixing things and mm -hmm. presuming and not getting to the heart of it. The whole honor and dishonor thing of bills of exchange was so that the corporations could effectively ram through their claims. In fact, if you go and have a look at the Bill of Sales Act I mentioned, you discover, surprise, surprise, that if, uh, if bills are not re-registered every five years, then all title and all uh, claim of the property of the bills gets vested to the, to the state. So what I'm saying is I believe that the procedure in terms of negative vermin and the stuff that people have been getting onto with notarization is really the commercialization of debt. When we look at the pure nature of an agreement, it comes down to this. If there is no meeting of minds, then strictly as a maxim of law, you do not have a pure agreement. I'm sorry, there is no, there is no middle ground. Yeah? Right. All right? Okay. Um, yeah, uh, I was going to say uh, the final, your, this October 31st, uh, you're going to be... Uh, it's final pronouncement, really. Is, is that what you're saying? Calling it? Yeah. Well, it's the third one of the of the of the big trusts. And at October 31st, we want a double-sided writ. And what we're looking to do is see is if as many people as possible can uh, get copies of that, seal it, witness it, and get it up on church notice boards and pretty much across the system, so that the system at large is given, you know, first and final notice that. It's, yeah, it's I, I, I was going to ask you how uh, how would I get a copy so that I could do that in this area that I'm in. I'm, um, I'm, I'm going to have that up. I said I was going to have it this week, but I was distracted from it. So uh, give us the next few days. So by Monday, okay. Tuesday, it'll be available on University of Eucadia as well as on the front page of, uh, of one-heaven.org. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Alpha. Thank you very much. No problem. Okay. Thank you. Um, just while we're uh, muting there, please, if anyone wants to speak, it would be great to hear from you on the chat. I see there's a few more questions up, so I'll go through those questions, but it's always great to get feedback if you want to give a call. Uh, what we have here is uh, a question from guest 18. 
regarding will and testament. Can we confirm that the word